Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and I'm going to be doing another video on uh, oil lamps. Uh, this is a what's commonly referred to as a hurricane lantern and there's a reason for that. And I'm going to be going over the very basics of this particular style of oil lantern. Um, I did another video about oil lamps in general. To this one I'm going to be sp specifically concentrating on this particular style because it's so popular and so common. Um, you're watching this video because you're either interested in getting one of these, you want to learn more about them, or you just got one and you want to know, okay, now what do I do? How do I maintain it? How do I put fuel in it? How do I use it? And that's what this video is for. So the first thing you want to do is look the lantern over and make sure that everything appears to be functioning and is present. There's no broken or missing parts. And in the other video, you'll notice that this particular lantern was not lit. That's because it was actually this lantern. And it probably won't show here in the video, but there's a problem with the lift mechanism. And I was, it was functional, but I was afraid that it was gonna break. So I contacted the store that I bought it from. They just sent me a new body. And I put the burner and the globe out of that one into this one. So I've got some spare parts for this one. So that's very, very important is to you make sure that you go over the lantern and make sure that it appears to be functional and properly assembled and there's no missing or broken or malformed parts. Okay, we're gonna go over some of the parts of the lantern. Down here at the bottom is the fuel tank or the font. There is no fuel in this one. This is why I uh, kept this one apart from the others in the other video is I didn't put fuel in it because I didn't wanna light it because I didn't know if I had to be sending it back. So this one has no fuel in it. So I'm gonna show you what you need to do when you first get one of these. But down here is the bottom is the fuel tank. This is where you put the fuel and you always want to make sure you check with the manufacturer what kind of fuel you use. All mine use simply clear lamp oil. Um, some of them will burn citronella. Obviously those are great for when for the use you go outdoors and, and want to use that mosquito repellent property. Some will run kerosene. Um, you don't want to put just anything flammable in here. You put gasoline in this and you're going to have a really bad day. Many of them have a little cap here to fill the tank with. Now you don't want to fill these things completely full, especially if you're just going to put it away and, and keep it in storage. You only want to fill this tank 70 to 80%. The reason being as the temperature and the barometric pressure changes, the amount of fuel volume changes. And so you want a little bit of space for that fuel to expand into. You don't want to completely fill it up and then have it overflow because the temperature or the barometric pressure changes. Down here at the uh, bottom is this base plate. There are some holes in this. However, that does not provide all that much air and I'll get into uh, explaining that a little bit later. Over here on the side is the lift handle. That lifts up the globe and the chimney to allow access to the burner down here. And the burner is where the wick is contained. There's also a little knob here that you use to raise and lower the wick. You've got the globe, which obviously keeps the wind from blowing out the lantern. That's why they call it a hurricane lantern. I put these in front of a whole house fan and just blow the heck out of them. And the flame does flicker a little bit but has no chance of going out. There's also these two retaining springs that hold the globe in place. These are not handles, these are actually vent tubes. Although they are structural and hold the chimney up, they're also drawing air down for combustion. Up here is the chimney where the exhaust gas and heat is released. There's a little handle here up here to pull this chimney up because it is spring loaded. And then there's the carry handle. This is not the carry handle. You do not hang or carry the lantern by this. You carry it by this. You don't carry or hang it by this because this is used to lift the chimney up and out of the way. Plus, this will get hot. If this has been operating for three, four minutes, and you pick it up like this, you're going to be setting it right back down if you're not dropping it. But what I mean by these being uh, air tubes is these are actually hollow and air actually enters in up underneath this rim, is pulled down by convection up into the burner where it's used in the consumption of the flame, and then the hot air escapes up out through here. And once it gets this airflow, most of the air used for combustion will come down through these tubes. This is what's called a cold blast lantern. 
There is a hot blast lantern. You'll notice that those do not have this large chimney assembly. They simply come together with another tube that goes straight down and caps off onto the globe. I don't have one because they aren't that common and they aren't that efficient either. These are more common, more efficient, and more popular. And that's why I have one of these. Um, you always want to make sure that you use the correct fuel that the manufacturer recommends. Don't get into th anything uh, exotic. Like, I mean, some people use vegetable oil or olive oil in some of these. It may work, but you run the risk of uh, having something very dangerous happening because the manufacturer hasn't really rated it for that fuel. As I said, this is uh, spring-loaded. What you can do is push these spring wires down, lift up on the chimney, and then you can just tilt the base and remove the chimney or the uh, globe. This also gets you access down here to the burner assembly, and it's just on a bayonet mount. It simply twists and pull out. The burner assembly has the part that holds the wick, the wick itself, and then a little knob here on the side to allow you to adjust the height of the wick. As I said, this has never had fuel in it, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how you fuel one of these too. But before we do, the first thing you want to do is trim your wick, and you want to take a nice sharp pair of scissors. You don't want to use those dull kitchen scissors you've been cutting chicken bones in the kitchen for the last 15 years. But you simply want to make a nice, sharp, even cut across the wick to get a good, solid edge. Then, you simply replace it. Now, if you're, un if you're uncomfortable with filling one of these with a flammable liquid, you may want to do it this way, with the globe, and globe removed and this base plate tipped back. That gets you a lot better access to this fill uh, opening here. Or if you wanted to, some manufacturers don't have this. You have to remove the burner assembly and pour the fuel directly down here into the tank. Either way will work if you have the little cap here. A funnel. You've got to have a funnel. Now this manufacturer supplies a funnel. If your lantern does not come with a funnel, don't run out to the kitchen and grab one that you use for food preparation and then try to clean it up. Go to the store, buy a funnel specifically for handling your fuel and your lanterns, and that way you don't have to worry about contaminating your food. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up, and it's very, very simple. Now I normally do this over the sink, or I will lay newspaper out, old newspaper to catch any spills, but uh, this one, this is pretty empty, so I'm going to do pretty good here. So you simply... Pour some fuel in. Set that aside. Now, once you get your fuel in, the last thing you want to do is reassemble this and fire it up. What you will need to do is wait long enough for capillary action to pull that fuel up into the wick, and I need to straighten that wick out a little bit so it comes out there. Yeah, come on now. There we go. I will need to wait for capillary action to get fuel up to the end of the wick. So if you're fueling this for the first time and your wick has been dry, I would suggest that you simply do it this way and just let it set for anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour to allow for that fuel to be soaked up into the wick because you do not want to light a dry wick because all you're going to do is just burn the wick. What you want to do is burn the fuel. So I'm going to let this set for a while and we'll come back and we'll light it up for the first time. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and I can see the color of the wick has changed. If you want to check this, you can always put your finger on the top and look for a little bit. Looks kind of waxy, but you can tell that there is a liquid on your finger. That means the fuel has been soaked up sufficiently into the lantern. 
so we can go ahead and reassemble this. And you got to make sure that you do this, pull these retaining springs up. I just do it this way because it's easier. And we'll just uh, do first light on this new lantern that I have. To light one, you simply need to pull down on this lever and then there's a little catch here on the side that allows you to keep it held up. That allows you access to the wick and the burner assembly. And what you're gonna do is light the match, put it underneath here, and then lower the globe. Once the lantern is lit, and you can see smoke hopefully coming out. That means it's up too high. You want to bring it down until it stops smoking. And we have a nice even flame here on our lantern. I like that flame. I really like it a lot. This is going to be a good all-around lantern. It's a good size. Um, if you continue to burn it too high and get soot, you can see the soot coming out. That is too high. You might be able to see here in the video already, it's starting to collect here on the inside of the glo globe. That's going to uh, make it less efficient to put out light. So you do need to do a little bit of maintenance. You can turn them down to where you hardly have any light at all. This makes a good night light, but most people want a little bit of light and that is a very, very, very nice flame. That is very, very good right there. I like that. This is gonna be a nice bright lantern for all around use. Uh, to clean one of these, okay, first off, let me back up. To shut one off, you do not lift the globe and try to blow it out. What you're going to do is expose so much of your wick that you're really gonna have soot and smoke all over the place. The way you turn these off is you simply lower the wick until the flame is extinguished. There might be embers on the wick, so you wanna leave it down for a while. If you try to raise it back up too fast, it may reignite. But once it's out, you can go ahead and relift that wick and it's ready to go for the next time. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit too warm for me to do this. I'm gonna use this one as an example. To, there is a little bit of maintenance that you need to do. First off, you'll need to keep them clean, and to do that, you simply remove the globe. And the globes I simply take to the kitchen sink, clean out with warm soapy water and normal dish soap, and when they've dried off, I clean them off with glass cleaner. You will probably get a little bit of soot up here in the chimney. Simply take a wet rag and, and work it around up here in the chimney, and you'll be surprised how much stuff comes out of there. Um, you need to make sure that you have sufficient wick to do the job. Um, you can do that simply by pulling up the burner assembly and see how much wick that you have. You want to make sure that there's enough wick to reach down to the bottom of the tank to pick the fuel up. Once your wick starts to get too short, you need to replace it. You can buy wicks in one or two or three packs for a nominal fee. You can also get 25 or 50 foot rolls. Make sure you get the right size wick. These all have different sizes, so you'll need to make sure you know what size of wick to order. And if they get dusty, you simply clean them off with a damp rag at room temperature water. Other than that, there isn't a whole lot of maintenance to be done other than to make sure that all the parts are functional and, and not broken. Uh, a, a good lantern will last you a lifetime unless you are using these things for off-grid use, you're living off-grid and you're using them every night for light, a wick should last you a lifetime, so you shouldn't have to replace a wick. I've never replaced one, so. Yeah, this one's cool enough down that I can uh, handle it now, but you can see what happens here when you get the burner too high or the wick too high as you start getting this soot build up inside the globe and that's going to affect your light output so this is destined for the kitchen sink already you can see that i can take my finger and and clean that off in there but i still want to take it to the kitchen sink so that's all there is basic hurricane lanterns this is backpack hack coming at you be safe out there and i'll see you out there on the trail